India is playing an increasingly prominent role in discussions of digital public infrastructure, discussions of compute and AI. How do you see India's relationship to the tech issue and the role that it plays particularly in security as well as development? Um, it's, a, it's a sort of very open-ended question. Uh, so let me limit it to two, two comments. I think what is happening in India, what has happened uh, in India over the last decade and continues to happen in terms of deployment of technologies for governance, for service delivery, for public social welfare is actually an extraordinary story. What it has enabled us to do is to take up challenges which were either not addressable at all or if so on a very small scale and then use technology to, to really massively expand it. Uh, so when you are able today uh, to, you know, have a system with a backbone of a digital identity of uh, people and then are able to uh, figure out their entitlements and then are able to deliver on those entitlements knowing that it's going to the right set of people, uh, then it's, it's a totally different world out there. If... Ten years ago, uh, I had sat with you and said that, look, uh, in, the, in the coming ten years, we will be able to deliver 40 million homes to people and know exactly which people we're going to give it to. You wouldn't believe me. I wouldn't believe myself. If you say that, look, we have uh, today... Uh, Equal and not of a food stamp, but a, like a you know a food support system, which covers 820 million people. Or you have with, you know you know how important you know everybody struggles with health access. Okay, it's a big issue in this country as well. So to create at a at our level of income, remember we are still a three thousand dollar per capita income country. At $3,000 per capita, if you can optimize your health system using technology, and actually today, I think our health coverage is about 600 and something million. So we can contemplate doing things which we could not have done till we developed a digital public infrastructure. So that would be one. A completely different example, or actually not completely, slightly related. I would say look at something, uh, a big issue in international politics which is uh, the semiconductor world, you know, uh, uh, how do you create the, the supply chains for it, how do you make sure they are reliable, they are trusted. Uh, and uh, I think uh, today the, uh, the understand, you know, the, India is in a sense gearing up for that world. And we want to come in also as a technology player, including on the hardware side. That, if Apple phones is today making so much of its production in India, if we are, uh, you know, after years of neglecting this uh, domain, uh, today we have a serious semiconductor mission of which our crucial partner is the United States. So when we see, you know, the a lot of what is happening in this country, but, I mean, it's just that the uh, particular segment of that industry with us is different than yours. Uh, but uh, I, I would say there too, uh, you know, we can make a dip big difference because at the end of the day, technology is not impersonal. Technology means people. Technology means designers. It means engineers. It means somebody's mind has got embedded in a chip. So, so it is, uh, I think, something which we can make a big difference on. I note that also in your UN speech, you noted that for all the promise and possibility of technology for India and the world, there's also always a darker side and risks, and that suggests to me a, a balanced approach to the international discussion about technology. Since you mentioned trade, it does uh, make me think of China and the complex relationship that India and China have. I note that just recently China surpassed every other country in its trade relationship with India, and yet tensions with China persist, and I would love to hear how you see the strategic picture with respect to China and what India is trying to achieve in its relationship with China? Um, you know, um, when it comes to trade, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, China accounts for about 
globally about 31, 32 percent of global manufacturing. I think that would be the right number. And a lot of that has happened because over multiple decades, uh, uh, the international business, which is primarily Western-led, uh, has chosen uh, to collaborate with China for mutual benefit. So today, for any country, if you are into any kind of consumption or even into any kind of manufacturing, sourcing out of China is, is something which is inevitable. Because if you are consuming, if you are not manufacturing and consuming, that's probably where you get a lot of things the cheapest. And even if you are manufacturing a lot of your components and your semi-processed materials, uh, you know, uh, come, come out of there. So what happens is that, uh, in a sense, trade with China at one level is almost autonomous of the political or the rest of the relationship, you can say. So I don't think it's just a question of numbers. You also need to look at what is it which, which you, are, you are trading. Because there would be countries who would be more sensitive to their exposure. Uh, there would be countries who wouldn't care. So uh, I think for us today, uh, because we were earlier on uh, digital, on technology, we are very sensitive uh, to our data flows. You know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's often to me a little perplexing that people uh, debate so deeply how the data must be uh, secured at home, but are less uh, concerned about what happens when the data leaves your borders. So uh, in, in a much more data sensitive world, in a much more technology sensitive world, I think it's important to, to look at what your exposures are, how do you mitigate it, how do you balance it, how do you, how do you diminish the risks. Uh, separately from that, uh, in terms of our own relationship with China, I think uh, uh, it's a long story, but the short version is that we had agreements on how to keep the border peaceful and tranquil, and those agreements were violated by China in 2020. And uh, some of the, because we have forward deployments of our militaries, uh, uh, those, there are resulting tensions. And until those forward deployments are addressed, the tensions would continue. If the tensions continue, it casts a natural shadow over the rest of the relationship. So our relationship hasn't been great for the last four years. Another element of China's uh, role in the world, of course, is the discussions that play out between the US, China, the European Union, EU, BRICS countries around international economics. And this brings me to ask you a little bit about de-dollarization as a possibility for the world. At times, uh, India has expressed interest in an alternative currency that can serve as a reserve mechanism. And I wonder how, how you see that right now, what you see as the role of the dollar and these discussions about international economic policy. No, I, I think you have us uh, confused for someone else here. Uh, because we have never actively targeted the dollar. That's not part of our, either our economic policy or our uh, political or our strategic policy. Some others may have. Okay. Uh, what I will tell you is a natural concern we have. Okay. We often have trade partners uh, who do not have dollars to trade. Mm -hmm. Okay, So we now have to look at whether we forego dealings with them or do we find some settlement which, which works otherwise? So there's no, uh, there's no uh, I can say, malicious intent vis-a-vis -vis the dollar in doing this. This is, we're trying to do our business. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you make it difficult, you know, in the use of dollars. So we have some trade partners uh, who, with whom uh, trade in dollars becomes difficult because of your policies. So we'll have, we have to now, uh, we have to obviously look for workarounds. But for us, again, look, as uh, we spoke about rebalancing, we spoke about multipolarity, obviously all of this is also going to reflect on, on currencies and economic dealings. So it is uh, the, the era of American dominance is also an era of dollar dominance, an era of a certain, you know, a certain 
a hedging and a certain spread, other factors will come into play. I mean, that, uh, that it will be more competitive, even in currencies. Uh, 